gonna let the video play for a bit and uh somebody hammering it Trying to find an image for our destination. Like Trey, something took off like one of those ancient civilizations. I wonder if it could be an evolution. I don't know. Circular cave, flat top, coil spring bouncing down. Looking up at the white flame, Karen Lynn. There we go. Walk on the wild side. <clears throat> An echo, that's kind of like back to what Trey said. Let me turn the volume. So again, this is that. destination B, 1398. I like taking a look too. So. Paper. I'll, I'll be quiet for a moment, I think. Hi, Loretta. Hi, Chloe. Yeah, we're talking about last night. That's first on the agenda. Leaf Springs. I missed that one, Dolly. And shuffling of cards. Huh. Chloe Woodplanks holding up the underground canal. I caught that one. <clears throat> okay. Closing. Some sort of map. Yellow ribbon. Hmm. Like a peace offering. My story was very interesting, what I saw. <laughs> cool. Fish squid of some sort. Some people hiding behind a barrier. Mushrooms. I like seeing the mushrooms. Big trees grown in an abandoned garden by Lucky. So did you guys do your homework, uh, those of you here? Uh, did you piece together your visuals <clears throat> and make a story? Tell me what your story is. <laughs> Guest I've been adding... What I see wrong, I usually just separate my three words with a comma. <laughs> it's kind of topical. Where's Waldo? But that's less busy. Hi, Lucky. Good to see you. Twig poking out of a pond. <clears throat> Pandora's box tray. Nice one. Did you uh, put together a story in your mind from what you saw, Lucky? Was there anything that you kind of pieced together? My story is I'm sticking to it. <laughs> okay. Hi, Trey. Good to see you. <clears throat> Where's Waldo? I wonder if that could be... Could be relevant. I don't know. Okay. Hmm. Hold on. Got to grab something. Be back. One more look for me. 
mind-bending mushroom talk. I don't know. The overall effect seemed a bit ominous. Okay. Eiffel Tower, radio mass, light, lighthouse, half green, half yellow waves, a bug crowd of people pushing towards something. Yeah, I saw something similar. People behind glass looking at something. I don't know. Maybe something, I don't know. Maybe it's like Night of the Comet. A bunch of spores are going to come down and uh, uh, everybody will turn into zombies or something. I don't know. Big Spiral Gateway. Evil is on its way out. I like that one, Pamela Jean. Big Spiral Gateway. Repeating patterns like okay. in Persian. Hmm. There's the fog that Lucky was talking about. That's definitely, definitely it. That definitely means there's going to be a, a something come down. And <laughs> uh, Lucky, quiet town with a few... With very few people. Need one more look. Crowds over running like what I saw. to see the eclipse. <clears throat> Town is a mess. Townspeople have to clean it up with no help from government. Hmm. It's hard to make out what. <laughs> Amen. Followers can't sting you. It's like it's too much information. It's an overload of Every yellow images. ribbon was like a pink cancer ribbon, but yellow, not sure what that color actually meant. There's the hammering again. My view so much activity. of a heart-shaped wreath could be something you'd see at a funeral. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> well... Let's see what you guys got. Yeah, I usually, I don't, uh, <laughs> I, I, if my responses match yours, I take them much more credibly than uh, if they don't, because I have the front loading, so I could be influenced by just what I, what I uh, wrote down, you know, thinking of it myself. So looking at your views is much more interesting to me. Jesus followers, they sting you, do they? They sting you with their forked tongues? <laughs> or whatever? <laughs> that sucks, Trey. Yeah, tie a real ribbon around the old oak tree. Yeah, waiting for a lover to come back, maybe? I don't know. You're a Jesuit? Okay. I didn't know that, Trey. Good to know. Good to know. Thank you. Hey, Desert Rose, good to see you. The music in this is good. It was a kind of a fish uh, <laughs> swimming away from me, but it wasn't squid really fish. A fish. Squid fish. I was wondering if it was maybe the comet. Maybe the comet's like a fish. Or yeah, a fish comet, fish know, squid comet, something like a fish. <laughs> Circular cave flat. I do believe mo everything's biology. So bouncing down. Know, might not be too far off. Looking up at white flame. Fish squid comet. Who knows? Hmm. Steel container with due date. Side, an echo. Hey, Sab, big how you doing? starburst shape. So he says, swelling, mm. like festering or gone, a question not already. dead, still kicking. Next thing I saw was mushrooms. I saw mushrooms growing. 
So I saw like a fish and then mushrooms. And then a crowd of people behind glass uh, looking at something. That's why I wanted to say that one because of Chloe's, I think it was. Yeah, I wasn't sure if they stuff. were contained or being... Big starburst and echo. Or observing something. Swelling up like festering. Kind of could have gone either gone way. Like they were dead, still kicking. Contained, mm -hmm. trying to isolate themselves from... Fear the of the unknown. Definitely the isolation. Because of the yeah. that's the people behind the glass I saw. <clears throat> so what is our destination? <laughs> it is the eclipse and the devil's comet. <laughs> figured we'd co cover this one eclipses are considered omens of things to come as well as comets with a com with uh, a comet uh, visible on the eclipse event what does that mean as an omen or sign good or bad doing well does you're going to deposit mushroom spores on us <laughs> Are we going to get happy mushrooms or something? That was my funny Fear thought. of the unknown. Pushing, pulling force. But it, I, if it's by the sun, I don't think that's likely. Big starburst, so, yeah. Oh, man, you guys are oh, getting man. where we are. Dude, it's coming. Definitely. A holding pattern or gaining strength until recovered. Hmm. Maybe it's building up its Order spores to chaos, spray us. Or what if we get a leaf uh, spinning, leaf spring, an event like uh, shuffling of cards. when Earth mated with sky? And last time, last uh, crowd of feeling people. better today. I don't know if it, the Ill. people were trying to separate themselves oh, from was, something was or asleep, whether they nice. were observing something like in a zoo. Or, I don't know. Um. Wood shooting rockets at it, yeah. The underground canal and tunnels. Well, if all else fails, throw a giant penis at it, right? See if FK that helps. says no zoom tonight, won't settle. One image after another. <laughs> a river of pink with white icing, frosting, floating in it. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Some sort of map, yellow ribbon. Put those in as you uh, see them, Loretta, not all at once, because they might take their place. In what other people see. Because <clears throat> um, we operate as one mind. Some sort of map, a yellow ribbon, like a peace offering, a flower wreath in the shape of a heart. There wasn't anything to really take a break horrible between viewings, in the viewing, was there? To type so out what you see. Good point. It, does, uh, I'm talking to it you. will fit in yes, somewhere. Please. F Kitty, empty railroad tracks to nowhere. Hmm. A bridge to nowhere? I something big climbing up on something. So reviewing the comet at the and uh, the eclipse at the same time. Hey, Squirrel Sniper, good to what, see you. What kind of an omen? What does this mean for us? What, oh, yeah. I don't know. We'll I put up the chat, uh, the invite. <laughs> and people who want to come cages. in and have a... I don't know. Empty railroad tracks to nowhere. Saw? Thunderbird wings. Something big climbing up on something. Hmm. Okay. Big trees growing in an abandoned garden. Oh, Maybe that's my mushrooms, Lucky. A dome of hammered dark metal from above. Yeah, that could be the like the a bunker or some like the uh the the people behind the glass that I saw. Tell yeah. me if that pinned on YouTube for me. Uh, sparse vegetation like desert. Oh, we shrub. forgot it was a destination. Yeah. Kitty. Heck Kaleidoscope of like eyes can see a pattern through the trees. Yeah, that can happen. <laughs> Don't forget it's me speaking over me. <clears throat> hey Sab, how you doing? Good evening. Good afternoon. Good day. I run. Uh, whatever time it is in your part of the world. <laughs> yeah, afternoon. Yeah. We're both I think you're you're in the UK, so you're around five, six hours difference, I think. Yeah. Quarter past seven in the evening for me, indeed. Yeah. Nice. I've slept all day. I've only been awake for about four hours to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I have genuinely. I'm, I'm on a different time scale today. Yeah, I've but, been up for about four or five hours myself. Genuinely, as I was just saying to Desert Rose there in the chat, I've had um, what's called a herpetic whitlow in the thumb. Uh, let's see. Oh, they are so painful. I'm not joking. Yeah, to a point where you you literally want to chop your thumb off. They are. Oh so yeah, painful. little little bumpies. That grow, are those little bumps that just grow on your on your skin? Mm. Yeah, I've got little ones of those that grow every once in a while. I pick them off. No, you can't pick these. It's highly infectious. Oh, okay. The Whitlow. If you look on if you look online at the Whitlow, they are severely painful. And I asked, oh, okay. yes, probably not the same was, thing then. Yesterday I was really worried because I started to get a red line going up my arm here. Okay, yeah. Which means obviously it's infected the blood in the yeah, do you know what I'm saying? So oh. I was a bit I was a bit worried about that to yeah, be honest. I don't have that, hopefully thankfully. <laughs> But I've slept it off basically, like so. I um I did ring up yesterday and ask on the national health service thing on the on the number the free one, and uh, I did ask them like what should I do. They were saying to me, "Go to the hospital. Can you get to the hospital in the next hour?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, uh, "No, not really." <laughs> I said, "I'll tell you what. I said I'll caveman it and I'll uh, I'll sleep on it tonight. If it gets any worse, then I'll go I'll go tomorrow." Yeah. So, but luckily, it's okay. It's all right. The red line's gone. The the swelling under the lymph node under my arm has disappeared. So awesome. I feel a bit better. Anyway, what are we up to? What, what, what we? Uh... Well, right now we're looking at last night's uh, results. Uh, we remote viewed the comet and the uh, eclipse. There's a comet coming called the Devil's Comet. Well, it's not coming. Uh, it'll be visible during the eclipse because I guess it's closer or or will be near the sun right. so we're seeing if there were any effects going to come from that um i don't know i don't think there's too much people saw some energy stuff but this stuff takes a while to uh set in i don't know if it's an omen or not may um may i please suggest uh, that you see the the video that you're playing in the background yeah people saying that it's it's echoing, so you're talking over yourself. As yeah, as I, I, I turned on, I turned the volume <laughs> off. It should Just be all right now. There you go. Yeah, it's got my voice. There's uh, if I, the new computer seems to work a lot better. I had uh, a lot of troubles with my voice on the last uh, computer. I just replaced this one a few days ago, so it's it's much better. Yeah, uh, that's cool. That's cool. Oh, oh so does oh yeah don did you send your results to email here let me check do, 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 angry to destination there we go um let's see skeletal scales i crowds again the movie The Scream, I guess, 19, 1893, by, oh, the, the, the image, the uh, picture. Okay, so The Scream, that, uh, that painting, it was crowds, scales, eye, and skeletal. And a scepter, hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Got the crowd again. <clears throat> I did see you live last night, but I was so tired, obviously. Do you know what I mean? I was like, yeah. I left a like and I said hello in chat and then I buggered off. Yeah. Yeah. We had uh, yesterday off work. So uh, I slept most of the day. That was what uh, I did. There, um... have, you noticed, have you noticed a lot of us light bearers are feeling very exhausted recently as well? Yep. Yep. They're very they're bringing yeah. new systems online. I'm fair, I, I, and it's not just. I, I was in a different couple of groups yesterday with a few other <clears throat> light bearer people mm. like ourselves who, who were on a higher vibration. Let's say, if you want to put it that way, and um, more sensitive. I think. Yeah, I think we're a lot more sensitive to all of what's going on at the minute, and there's a lot of chaos being brought into the world as well. Like so, yeah, I do believe. I, was, uh, yeah, I thought this was an uh, interesting uh, 
HEH BMAC hybrid polling MAC protocol for W bands operated by human energy harvesting. Uh, we have an, some interesting abstract here. Um, the pro, pros protocol combines two different mediums, access methods, namely polling, um, and this probabilistic uh, contentation, content, connect, con, I can't Connen say that word. It's not connection. Contentation. Yeah. Um, access to adapt its operation to the different energy and states, active and inactive, changes that the network nodes may experience due to their random nature. Well, we're the network nodes that they're talking about, but they're not saying it directly to you. Um, <laughs> so they're worried about the damage um, that the network nodes may experience um, in doing this. So they're talking about how they can mitigate that because they know they can do it. They can do it. No problem. They can, they can energy harvest from you, but um, what they're concerned about is, you know, how much energy they can harvest and, and how damaging it is because you have to be able to heal yourself uh, before the next bout. Right. So they have to balance between the human body healing itself and them damaging it, healing, damaging. And that's really what uh, part of this is talk. Big part of this is talking about. Um, random nature and uh, let's see. So um, network nodes may experience due to their random nature and the time variation of the energy harvesting sources. HBH, uh, HEHBMAC exploits the packets uh, inter arrival time and their the energy harvesting rate information of each node to implement an efficient access scheme with different priority levels. In addition to our protocol can be applied dynamically in realistic networks since it's adaptive to the to the topology changes, allowing the insertion, removal and wireless sensor nodes. Extensive simulations have been conducted in order to evaluate protocol performance and study uh, the, the throughput and energy trade-offs. So the trade-offs are very important to them. They're hoping to get a bonus out of these trade-offs. Um, so the wireless body network, the W bands, are specified as the IEE 802.15.6 standard for short range wireless communication that's our that's access to your mac address there the 802.15.6 um wireless communications in the vicinity of or inside the human body a w band consists of small intelligent devices also called body sensor nodes which can be sensor nodes uh in the i triple e uh world can be anything from uh, a wearable, nanotech, any type of a, a sensor, it, you know, so dust, your skin, that's a sensor, uh, your bones, your muscles, all kinds of things, um, all kinds of different nanotechs as well. Um, Think of all the receptors that we have inside. We have billions and billions of receptors inside of us. Oh, yeah. Like. Yeah, Each we make one, we yeah. make a great antenna. So yeah. e even without the uh, even without nanotech, um, they still have us used as a an antenna. You can be the human being makes a great antenna. Yeah, yeah, makes a lot of sense. Sorry, I'm using them because my missus has just walked in, so she doesn't like being on camera. <laughs> <laughs> um, so where were we here? Um, also called body sensor nodes. Hmm, gee, that's not uh, too telling. With sensing, processing, and wireless communication capabilities, able to act without assistance from other devices. So they're telling you right there that these, they don't need anything. They don't need it. <laughs> the nodes that form part of the W band are devices capable of performing one or more actions with respect to the monitoring of physiological parameters, diagnosis, and treatment of disease. So they're telling you right there, without nano, without you having a wearable, they don't need it. They don't need it. With the existing devices uh, and the W band, they can do all they need to do. <laughs> this is a document where they're actually telling you that they're 
actually inside the human body. That's a, a very important fact that that fact needs to get across to people first before they even understand how, why, you know, uh, that people are use, being used <coughs> as nodes in the network. You're already being, that's already confirmed right here. They've got the W band. That's not even up for debate in this at this point with them. The only thing is, how how can we harvest energy from you? Now, we've got you on our network, right? We've got your number. We've got your Digi twin. Now, how can we harvest some energy from you? Now, we got to take more from you. <laughs> yeah, they've invaded us without permission, right? Uh, it's been a big focus for me over the past while and uh, I think it should be a big focus for a lot of people but you know getting people to even admit that it's happening is going to be even a problem uh, oh yeah it's difficult most people I talk to about a lot of stuff like that I know about I'm just a crazy man yeah you know but uh, you know I have friends that I try to show stuff to and they won't even look at the data it's hilarious you know it just, it just doesn't exist. I won't look at the data and uh, don't bother me with that. I don't want to know. It's uh, I guess it's too scary, too mind-bending for them. Ignorance has blistered some people. Yeah. You know. Sorry, I, I, I want to stop it. I want to take control of it myself. I want to find a way to mitigate it, eliminate it, just stop it from happening. Right? So... Well, if you believe in chakras, aren't they harvesting those? Well, they're mapping at the moment. I, I, I'm not exactly sure how far they've gone. They, they seem to want to get into um, disease transmission and curing through the wireless band so they can give you a nice disease and then uh, offer you a cure, wireless cure, for a wireless disease. <clears throat> Hi, beloved. Good to see you. Hey, Scotty boy, if I didn't say hi, hello. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Hello to everybody in chat as well, by the way. Yeah. But I've been searching uh, recently to see if the grounding that I'm doing is stopping us from being used as an antenna. And at the moment, I do not believe it does. What it does do, though, is... St is probably draw off um, overcharges like um, if a if a uh, antenna gets struck by lightning it has a ground to it uh, so that it doesn't you know explode burst into flames get destroyed so I think that the grounding is offering at least that <clears throat> that we are still being used as part of the network but that it's stopping at least some of the uh, destruction or overload to the cells. It's probably not stopping all the damage either uh, because you're still being used as a processor of VPN, uh, cybersecurity. But it seems to mitigate at least a good portion of the negative effects. Hi, Gen 2 Gun. Mm-hmm. What happens when you queue for the, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I'd, I'd, I'd like to find a way to take myself out of the system. I don't want them using me as a MAC address at all. I don't want uh, to be part of their security protocols or any of it, you know. Hi, Mitch. How you doing? <clears throat> So I've been uh, been searching out uh, grounding of antennas and stuff like that recently. And although I'm not, don't believe I'm off the system, at least the system isn't doing as much harm to me. It might, um, it, might it disrupts the signal, I do believe, as well, if you want to put it in that perspective, because not last night, night before, I felt, obviously due to me being a bit ill as well, like, I, um, I just felt like so drained and et cetera. So what I did was, uh, literally, because I couldn't sleep as well, though. So that's a very bizarre kind of situation. You know, you feel drained, you feel absolutely tired, you feel ill, poorly, etc. I mean, yeah. so much pain, but I couldn't sleep. So at literally 1 a.m. in the morning, <laughs> I 
I got my, because I was already in bed, I got back out of bed and I put shorts and T-shirt on and I went barefoot into the front garden and just stood on the grass literally for about 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. And and then I went back up and then I obviously cleaned my feet off and whatnot and went, got back in bed. Within, literally within five, 10 minutes, I was asleep. Bush, out, out cold. Right. Yeah. And yeah, and I felt so much better. Like I say, I felt so much better as well. That's yeah, drain off all those free electrons. I, I end up when I lie down, my legs start twitching. I have uh, restless leg syndrome. <laughs> ah, now my wife sat in the background. What do you call my restless leg syndrome? The cha cha cha. The cha cha slide. Uh, yeah. <laughs> because yeah, I've, got a, I've got a wire. Irish dance. I do an Irish dance in bed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I put a wire around my bed and I attached a battery to it at the negative pole that uh, stopped it. Oh. I haven't gone that far yet, but yeah. Yeah, uh, you should make yourself a grounding bracelet of some sort so you can uh, sleep with it on. The headsets are good, but the the bracelet you can sleep with. All right. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Get yourself grounded in bed. Now, it may not help your legs, but uh, it'll certainly draw some of the uh, ankle bracelet. Ankle bracelet would be awesome, yeah. I haven't found a comfortable one yet, though. No, that's the point, yeah. I'm, I'm quite fussy and going to sleep as well, to be honest with Shungite you. Shungite may work, Don, although it's, from all the testing I've seen, it, it's not all that effective, unfortunately. Some people live by it. I don't know, maybe you're, you know, you've got to think also of the uh, mind. So if the mind believes it's working, uh, maybe it'll have a greater effect. Yeah, placebo effect. Yeah. So, but with testing with equipment, shungite uh, to to use shungite. I don't know if it draws any energy in. It may. Um, I can't test for that. Uh, but it for to use it for shielding, you'd have to have a one inch panel of it. Yeah, I believe um, Reiki is on that same sort of level. Like you get my drift because. It's a it's a belief system. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that was, that's good because uh, eighty percent of disease is is in the mind. How it affects you is in all in the mind. Yeah. 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 Exactly that. Um, when I first came across Reiki, my my ex partner who I have a child with over in Ireland, uh, my son, she is a Reiki master. Now she it took about four years for her to become a Reiki master, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, when I first encountered it, uh, I was in my early 20s at this point. I'm 43 now, so it was a good 20 years ago that this happened. Like, And I was very, I wasn't the same man as I am today, let's just say that. <laughs> and I was, um, it, it baffled me, it confused me. And I'm like, I almost, like, even to a point where I was I was taking the mickey out of her for it. Like, if you get my dress like, I was really, <laughs> like, I was mocking her for it. Like, yeah. Because she would sit there with, like, a bowl of food or cup of a drink or whatever and she'd literally sit there like mm, doing a reiki yeah. and I'm, I'm like so that's that does what sorry <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean I was yeah. Like, uh, yeah I was questioning her and I'm like what is this what are you doing like you mental <laughs> honestly yeah but now after being down the rabbit hole for 20 years <laughs> yep exactly yeah like I have a good example of that like I make colloidal silver and gold and uh I've asked my wife to pour the water in. Just pour the water in. It comes out a completely different color. It does not taste the same, does not have the same effects. Just from her pouring the water. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, I do believe that. Like they said, you, I mean, now I know a lot more about our physical, mental, spiritual, etc. than... I wouldn't say I'm not skeptical about Reiki, but what I, I'd put a different kind of spin on it is like, like you say, it's the power of belief. It's the kind we manifest. Well, yeah, we, and if the, you truly believe in something, there is you, the reality that we are, uh, you know, we have an energetic body as well as a physical. Well, well, yeah. I mean, if you want to you put know. it in that, if you want to put it in that way, then obviously, yeah, we are just frequencies and vibrations. We are literally mm -hmm. everything. Is even I had to explain this. The other day as well, yesterday I was on a live stream and we were talking about the different dimensions mm -hmm. and how moving up to the fifth dimension in our spiritual realm, etc., is us ascending spiritually and so on. 
But she was basically saying, like, on this, from from the 2D plane, we draw, you know what I mean? Up yeah. to the 3D plane is where we live. The 4D plane is a metaphysical kind of, like, tra transient, where we, where, where most of us lot are now, where we, like, you know, like, like yourself and I and various yeah. other people chat and so on and so forth. And we are, we're gravitating now. It seems to be technology is gravitating us together right now. Mm. We're able to connect even across the world, etc. Now, so we're not just in our own little bubbles, being told by everyone around us, most other people around us, that we're we're nutcases, that like, we're mental. And I I had to explain to her that we are all vibrational, even down to this. We we see this as being solid. Mm. Yeah, it's a solid mm. object, so to speak. This it's a solid object, but in reality, it's not because the atoms that make up this are actually. 80% space. It is, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, the, the nuclear and the, the protons, atoms, and everything else. It's Science can't even explain what a what an atom actually, what forms it, because it's got a proton, a neutron, and they, they create like an energy vortex field around the atom, which it disappears and comes back, disappears and comes back. It It's forever doing that as well. Now, they don't know where that, that new that neuron uh, proton, they don't know where it disappears to. It comes back again. They don't. They don't have a clue. Mm. So science still can't explain exactly what we're made up from. So and that blew her head. She was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> <laughs> but when you put it in that logic, yeah, we are we're vibrational. That's we are vibrational that's creatures. So that's an interesting try. Try that, Don. That'd be awesome to try. Tom's got an interesting uh, wrapping copper around shungite with a negative pole of a battery, I guess, attached to it. Might act as a very good antenna. I don't know. Mm, I, I bet magnetite as well. Yeah. Magnetite. Well, our, yeah, our, um, the uh, crystals in our brain, the uh, yeah. those are magnetite as well. The base. Yeah. Let me just... And grigite, uh, whatever that is. I don't know what grigite is. It's another iron. It's an FE... Uh, SO4 and SE, FE04. I can't remember. <clears throat> but there's two types of crystals. One has eight sides, one has 20. And the 20 side ones are uh, made of uh, magnetite. Yeah. Hmm. <sighs> yeah, they vibrate with magnetic fields around us. And the Earth's magnetic field, and that's where they believe the memory of the Earth is held in the magnetic field. <laughs> Scotty. I'd be scared if I was them, too. Have a great day, Max. Hi, Mitch Gander. <laughs> okay. Yeah, shungite with copper wrapped around it. Well, the copper and the net, the uh, ground is going to act as an antenna, and the shungite might amplify that. I don't know. Yeah, how much hooch are you still sitting on, BA? Or have you drank that uh, honey wine yet? Ah, uh, coffee. I'm in every dimension at once. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Be right back. Gotta grab an ashtray. <clears throat> yeah, we're multi-dimensional beings. You know, there's listening. no real separation, like the dimensions. You know, we can't see them, but that's exactly the way out. That's exactly the way I was explaining it to her as well, because she was basically obviously of the mindset of a linear um layout of mm. the dimensions and i had to explain to her and say to her listen no it isn't like that you can't you they're not just stack they're not like layers that you go through they're literally it's like it's the best way i can explain it is it's like a big ball of wire of the dimensions and it's all interwoven into each other but you have to be able to, as an antenna, you have to be able to tune into each one. Mm -hmm. So each level of consciousness is 
ourselves being able to break through the programming that we've already had as indoctrination etc etc you know this is that and that is this well take all of that out of your head and literally retrain your brain into believing that you are able to access every dimension mm -hmm. but you need to be you need you need to connect to it you need to find it you need to be able to tune into it so yeah i don't know i went into it in great detail mm. and she was basically saying it's too much for me <laughs> you're very, you're very clever sir but you're a very clever individual and i'm like i'm not clever i'm just, I'm just your blog me i know nothing me <laughs> yeah. just looking at the most sensible way things are put together you know yeah yeah I just yeah. have a, I just have a logical mind. I think that's the way it is. It's not so much being clever; it's just being logical. That's yeah. Oops. New computer. When I move my my cursor around, it does all kinds of funky things. I don't want it to. <laughs> I don't like this new. Well, it's an all right computer. It's working well. So exactly that beloved abstract. Exactly that. Yeah. It, um, it's just. It's a it's a theory. It's a speculation. Exactly yeah. That. Yeah. Like um, myself, I like electron flood theory. It's uh, I think it's cool showing the images. Like here, I've got a picture of a photon right there. That's pretty cool. I like showing that. Mm. But yeah, you can see the dark and light. There's a. Uh, an accretion disk in the middle so that's a photon of light moving through space or well a space <clears throat> really cool but i think uh everything's made up of those those balls the dark and light and that's all there is in existence is dark and light balls everything's balls guys <laughs> possibly Keep seeing my blue orb. I just read that. <laughs> <laughs> People from UK always sound intelligent. I'm just okay. Can't understand me. <laughs> Was it? I don't know. I know a lot of English people. Who... <laughs> yeah, if you can't understand it, you just just agree with it. Yeah, yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> I agree with everything you're saying. I don't know what it is, but I agree with it. <laughs> he just sounds so intelligent. You know? <laughs> I've got a who's seen orb. I mean, an, 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 an actual. Let me just compose myself when I say. I think this. some of the balls are big, Scotty. Some of the balls are small. I'm not sure. You've you've heard my story about seeing my orb of light, haven't you? Oh, uh, you can tell it again. But I'll I'll put it in a nutshell. I'll try and condense it the best I can, so people because people are talking about seeing orbs of light here. Now, so, oh, backstory is my mum had been diagnosed with cancer when I was age 17. Mm -hmm. um, she got told she had four years to live. She actually went she went on until I was about 21, so about accurate pre pretty much. Um, she didn't die of cancer, though. She got into remission. Uh, within this time of having, and I mean, it was multiple cirrhosis, it was leukemia, it was a severe, it was severe um it was basically terminal that's what they told her so because she'd been told that she had terminal cancer she and i was traveling at the time as well i'm i'm often i was in holland i was in do you know what i mean i was down south in england etc my mum's from up north so i wasn't actually living at home anymore mm. during this time i was often away which kind of opened up a little door for her to say to me right give me a call every week yeah just so we can stay in contact i love my mum anyway it was one of them she was such a good she was a good woman i'm telling you she really was like mm -hmm. um and so she confided in me and said to me listen i've been looking into the spiritual side of realm sort of stuff like i've been looking into like yeah she wanted to contact her late dad as well like and she 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 said to me i'm gonna if i do but when i do pass away which is kind of inevitable eventually anyway for us all but if I do pass away before my time, um, I'm going to come back and show you that there's something after we pass away. 
And I was like, okay, no, uh, yep, I'll keep an open mind. I, I'll believe you. So, you know, like I said, I was in that age of being a bit skeptical and all the rest of it as well. My dad is the opposite to my mum. He's, he's like, you live, you die, you go in the ground, worms eat you, that's it, full stop. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's it. So that's my dad. Um, anyway, so it was two and a half years after my mum passed away. And I'd been working in a pizza factory, 12 hour shift. I'd come home. Um, my ex-partner at the time, she was sat on the bed, cross-legged, back up against the wall, reading a book. Now, I don't, it must have been bereavement, whatever, came over me. But it, in that moment, I sat at the end of the bed and I prayed for a good 15, 20 minutes. I poured all my heart out. I literally begging my mum to come show me, to give me a sign, to show, you know what I mean? It's like, you promised me, mum, come on, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's been two and a half years now, please, come on. I'm in this emotional state now. I'm here wanting it. I need it. So, Shireen, ex-partner, she um, she said to me, come talk to me about your mum. Come, come. She Obviously, she must have felt really awkward at the time, like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, do I do? <laughs> so I sat in front of her, cross-legged, so knees touching, as you can imagine, like, yeah, we're literally like, yeah, I'm cross-legged, our knees touching, and again, 15 minutes into chatting about my mum's life, how good she did, how, you know, how, how, how mentally stable she was, how she'd been looking into all the different spiritual kind of realms, like she'd been to Methodist churches, spiritualist churches, she'd been to clairvoyance, mediums, you name it, like, yeah, she'd done everything that she knew was able, Ouija boards, everything, and she'd never, she'd never experienced anything, so mm -hmm. he said to me, when I get the opportunity, I'm going to come back and show you. 15 minutes into chatting about all of this, a pinprick of, like a plasma ball, like you see the ball lightning on the interwebs. Yeah, yeah. It was literally, it was like an orangey white colour. Beautiful. And it was, it was immense. It was like, in that moment, you know, when you freeze, like, you, you know, the old proverbial, I saw a ghost and I froze. Yeah, yeah. there's nothing you can do. You just, your whole system just shuts down and that's it. You kind of like, oh. I was so focused into it, and honestly, it grew to about football size, or what you call soccer ball size, yeah, mm -hmm. but that's quite big, yeah, but size yeah. of my head, let's say, and um, it floated from my left knee, her right knee, to my yeah. right knee, her left knee, and then it just disappeared, uh, I was like, oh, I mean, it must have been a couple of minutes of all, but to me, it felt like so long it felt like an hour do you know what i mean that was like yeah. zoned into this yeah, just entranced yeah. yeah it just tranced into this into this ball of energy whatever it was like so um my initial my first thing i said to shireen was did you just see that and she was like yeah i said what did you see and she told me we just saw an orb of light <laughs> yeah. so that confirmed it to me that 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 experience had just happened to us you know i was logical mm -hmm. enough to say like you know i didn't say what i saw i asked her what what she just seen with me and she confirmed it then should have wrote it down on a piece of paper and traded papers eh but yeah that you know what i mean but yeah still yeah. no no what confirmed it even more for me was 10 years later i'm out in france i'm living in france i'm in a little off-grid cottage mm -hmm. planning to build eco homes and all the rest of it like yeah and this is almost like 10 years ago now as well so, and she called me because we've got a child and we've got a daughter and she was calling me about getting the birthday present for our daughter. Right. And I interrupted her and I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. I will sort that. But do you remember 10 years ago when we was at Closet and I came home and she interrupted me at that point and went, you mean, you mean when we saw that orb of light? Yeah. So 10 years later, she reconfirmed what I had and, yeah. and I did that. I did that specifically because after 10 years of having an experience like that, you start questioning yourself whether that oh, was yeah. really right. Did you know what I mean? Whether yeah. that was just, was it, was that tripping? Was it? Yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, she confirmed it again, 10 years after it happened that it did actually happen. So I, I can't refute that. You can ask it. I mean, if I give you a, you know what I mean? If I give you a personal number, yeah, right I now, believe you. Yeah. You offer that to yourself right now. Like, I do the same true. thing with my wife. We saw another planet in the freaking sky. We've seen weird things in the sky. And we, she she does the same thing too. Every once in a while, she'll go, Do you remember this? Did that really happen? And I'm like, Yep, that really happened. Yep. <laughs> you know? 
Yeah. So yeah, so, I get that. Yeah, it, it, you know, you do. You doubt yourself. You know, did that really happen? Like, come on, I didn't yeah. see another planet. I didn't see an orb. Come on, I didn't see a ghost. Did you? Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah I remember yeah. that. It's like, oh, thank God, I'm not insane. Yeah. You know? <laughs> now, with the logical perspective of this as well, I, I have the strong belief that that was my mum giving mm -hmm. me that, giving me that signal, that sign, that that confirmation. Let's say. Mm -hmm. And now I've dug into this as well so much since that. And I mean, literally, if you look on my, <laughs> you look on my little board here that I have, my little cupboard door on top of my boiler, <laughs> which I've done myself. I've built myself a little corner in the kitchen here so I can, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Do all your works. When you're looking at me, like off this, off this little shelf here. Yeah, I've but got a cupboard. <laughs> on here, I have literally over the past five years that this has been here. Oh, I my have... wife would flip if I did that. I can't be drawn. Oh, this is, on... this is my cupboard. This is oh, okay. just, that's your uh, cupboard. None, none of the rest. Okay. <laughs> the rest all is all okay. <laughs> none of the rest is there. It's just my cupboard that I've got. <laughs> You've got a great wife there, I tell you. <laughs> oh, yeah, she puts, she puts up with a lot from me. I tell yeah. you anyway, so, so what I'm showing you is basically I have dug into as much as I can about orbs of light and where people or religions or faiths, yeah. beliefs, etc. they all... They all have some connection into this as well. Now, the, the Tibetan Book of the Dead talks about it. The inward Hinduism of the Subbado talk about it. Now, you go into a lot of NDE stories, near-death experience stories, and a lot of them have orbs of light in them. Now, the Rosicution and the Hermetics as well, if you go through a lot of those scriptures, they talk about us being energetic beings and that we're able to transform our energy after we die into orbs of light. Um, the Book of Jubilee has two or three references in there. Mm -hmm. There's the Ugand Ugandalan, um, the Izara. <laughs> honestly, I have dug the Aragon there, the Aragon. Um, oh, the, honestly, I have literally dug into this mm -hmm. so much over the past few years to try and find the answers and try and find what it is. And to me, it's... it's un it's irrefutable there's there's so much evidence out there that actually proves that this level of existence that we live right now this 3d consciousness level of existence isn't the only existence available and therefore that brings me into the dimensions of consciousness so my belief is that when we pass away or when we leave this physical presence we, we transform our energy and we go into like what's called the subbardo, which is an in-between state of recycling our souls, if that makes sense. Yeah, recycling our energy back into this. Maybe we're given an opportunity within that subbardo of reliving our life again mm -hmm. or being put into a new life, into this new situation. If you look at Dolores Cannon, and she talks about a lot of this as well, like, um which you know that's what i'm saying it can't just be me like 20 years ago i had this experience and 20 years i've been looking for an answer i, and I think we, our next lives really have a lot to do with our magnetics the magnetics of our soul and mm -hmm. um the work we do on them changes the magnetics like how we change our aura as we develop yeah. so I, I have a theory that when we get uh, reborn you're drawn to specific energies, which will be in certain places. So and, uh, I've looked into all of that as well, the biogeology. Yeah. yeah. And I've looked into like the... So I think you're drawn, drawn back to learn certain lessons by which energy uh, energies are, are Taurus field or chakras are expressing or lacking or, uh, you know, needing work on. Oh, biofield cameras you can get them but they cost a lot of money to they get do. Them. one yeah. second i gotta let my cat out the door yeah so you know just i have i have genuinely dug into this so much it's unbelievable but yeah so like i'm saying when we're, when we're in this what they call in between worlds these the in i'm looking up as i'm looking for reference the sabado which is the in between of rebirth my cat you can you can transform it's like a ball you you see people in their energy forms which comes across as like a ball of light so 
maybe she was in that two and a half years. I don't know what my mum did. Maybe she went off and experienced what she needed to experience. Go and say hello to the other energies that she'd left behind. She probably went and sat with her dad that she'd been trying to contact. And so, do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. maybe. Oh, no, I don't know exactly. But we, I'm just we've done that. We've remote viewed people on their way to uh, the next side. And yeah. a couple of interesting th things. They do very physical things. Um, this one guy, uh, guy Brian, that we saw Milky Way uh, messenger. He uh, he rode in a fast car. He went to Antarctica. He went to the supposed birthplace of Jesus. He, he did a lot of stuff before he went to a, a stairway in the desert and went up the stairs. So when you when you go, you get to do. Seems like you get to do everything you wanted to do and ex get those experiences before you go. So a little bit yeah. of a bonus. And also, she did make that promise as well to me as well. So maybe she was like, no, 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 I've got to do this first before I go. Do you know what I mean? I've got to yeah. do this before, I part, before I'm, I'm going up to the next thing. Yeah. I, I promised her that it was my, it, do you know what I mean? It was, it was a big thing for her as well. She, she genuinely like, so... That brings into the speculation of like the heaven and hell theory as well, like which is basically if you live in the lower states of vibration, anger, um, greed, um, shame, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, then you're gonna live that. You're gonna carry that on as well. You're gonna carry that ego with you as well into the next one. Maybe yeah, a criminal, a thief always thinks everybody's a thief. Right? Yeah, that's uh, an unfortunate lifestyle, but. Uh... Usually, most thieves think that everybody could be a thief. They always look at everybody like that. And Pope John Paul said, heaven and hell are states of mind. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. Yeah, yeah. heaven and hell are states of mind. Yeah, if you, yeah. yeah, I do. I, I, I believe, I'm like, I'm up there, man. Yeah. I, I genuinely, even when I'm poorly, ill and all that, I still have a smile on my face. I still yeah. I still think that, you know, I'm here, I'm living it. That's, that's, that's a blessing, that is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, right, Loretta got to finish his bucket list. Even we yeah. uh, did uh, John Kerry. No, not John Kerry. Oh, God, I can never remember his name. The guy that claimed he was a prisoner of war, but he just basically rolled over on his own troops. Oh, God, what was his name? But anyways, for him, he was in a cottage, and uh, there was a, a big a submarine coming to pick him up so his whole clandestine lifestyle was being lived out you know he was going off to dreamland i guess new schwabia or something i don't know <laughs> but even like politicians they have their <clears throat> their dream life after death as well it seems yeah i'm just replying sorry i'm just replying to uh Desert Rose, though, with that comment about the ego, and it can be a good thing, but also ego, like, ego, like in balance. ego in balance. That's a yeah, good exactly. Thing. That's what I've just put there. It's like anything. If you use too much, it's a bad thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I, I'm very humble, as into like. Well, you can have a you can have a, an overly negative ego as well. Like people yeah. always think of it just in the positive. Like somebody has a big ego, but yeah. you know that. The, the opposite is also true as being like a sin or something that's not good for you is having a negative ego about yourself or being overly humble or overly detrimental. Yeah. Like insulting yourself. Um, you know, your mind doesn't take it to heart, but your body does. Yeah, you know? possibly. Yeah. yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. So I I, I believe I have like a, a a decent level of humbleness, egoism, if you get my drift. I know yeah, I know I know I know I know what I know. But I'm I also a, know there's a lot I don't know, if that I'm makes sense. I'm a pretty decent human being, but I'm sure there's people that are better than me and people that are worse in, in different yeah. aspects. You know, we all oh, have that, variation that. and different combination, right? Yeah. That's what makes it exciting is the different combinations. No problem. No problem, does it? I am uh, I'm very articulate with my words. I'm very good at explaining things. I, I don't like to believe so anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's good to be able to explain things nice and easily so people can understand them. I, I hate when people try to complicate things too much, especially yeah. in the spiritual realm. It just it just frustrates me because you, they could explain it so easily, but to sound intelligent, to sound spiritual, to sound 
There's the ego taking over. Yeah. <laughs> That's the ego gonna, taking over. Use trying a to make bunch of big words and explain <laughs> something for five minutes that should take about three seconds, you know? Dr. Hook's got it bang on there. That's what I said exactly. You, you just mentioned something I said exactly last night as well. Like, we're all on different levels and we're all dealing with different devils. That's pretty much exactly yeah. what I said last night in a different group on this as well. Yeah, like, there you go. Yeah. It was, um, his name's Smiler. Let me go and find his uh, channel for you. <laughs> and then you can have a little look. Uh... There's no one better than you, no? Probably not, Scotty boy. You're the best. <laughs> I did spend a good couple of three hours yesterday on that flipping channel as well. Like, oh, I might have to switch so, over to No, I already have it. Very very perspective of you okay hey astral outlaw nice to meet you i think you might have been here once before i'm not sure i got him there he is there you go and uh oh and the live stream's still up as well i believe copy clean link and i shall oh forgot to shut it down did he i've done no, he, he leaves him up he leaves him up yeah I've done that. I've, I've the first time I started using StreamYard. Where are you going, Max? Come on, chat. Hurry up, load up. He's about to cause trouble. <clears throat> Where are you going? Do you want to go up to the windowsill? Here, let's put you up oh. on the windowsill. Oh no, I can't post links in your chat because I'm not. Yeah, if I put it in uh, private for you, if I put the link in private, then you can share it yourself. There you go. That's better. There you go. I'll put Smiler's um, link in chat because we was talking about pretty much most of this last yeah, night, and meow. and I do explain it quite quite good as well in his on his channel. So. Uh, and it was yesterday's stream that he did. So yeah, go over. You want to go over to Smiler's and go on? I, I, I can't get to my private chat for some reason. Hmm. What the hell? Oh, there we go. Private chat. There we go. There you go. Got it. I was looking in the wrong spot. Smiler. Yeah. Okay. And you can see with his um with his avatar picture. <laughs> we live in a world where smart people are silenced. Okay. Yep. And he's got a scratched up uh, Union Jack there. Where are we again? Yeah, I like that as well, Scotty. I like the different levels of them, dealing with different devils. Yeah. I do like that. That's There's good stuff. Smiler. There's his website. Yeah. Ding, ding, round two. Oh, God, Taylor. Is that Taylor Swifty or something? I don't know. I don't know what that is. No. Okay. <laughs> He has a bit of drama going on, and because he has, he has trolls, etc., and he he still bites to some of it as well. So he, I just ignore. Honestly, like that second, that one there that says mm, I see Sparky has another rant to meltdown. Mm. I don't even go over to them ones. Genuinely, don't. <laughs> I don't even. I don't even engage in none of that sort of like. Yeah, it's, it's just lower. It just lowers your vibration. It just lowers the, what, the way that you think. It, it creates anger and. and oh, are they anger. like one of those? Uh, I call them the Jerry Springer channels, where they just. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. But he, I mean, he has a bit of that. But he, I, I, I mean, I had a private word with him last week, and and he's literally banged it all on the edge. And he, I just said to him, just don't bite to it. Just don't, don't even get involved. Just don't bite to it at all. Yeah. It's just, you're just you're just instigating more of it to happen when you do that. <laughs> yeah. I, I've, you know, a lot of people, people have asked me if that type of discourse is constructive, and. and universally i've seen that it's not no it, it does not raise any vibrations does not uh doesn't help it doesn't construct anything it doesn't build any uh new thoughts or new ways of thinking it just no it's just not good yeah exactly my point that's exactly the way i feel about it too but yeah go on and go on have a little look at smiles channel and that video that we did yesterday so it'll be like literally live if you go over to live home video shots live you got to live it should be there from yesterday oh, live. zionism british 
colonialism Palestine. Is that the one? No, it was nine days ago. Yes, today. Hang on, so why are you not there then? It was literally yesterday. Last night. I don't know if he's put Maybe it up he took it down. Maybe he took Maybe it down. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So he doesn't, oh. does he spend his time arguing with people or does he actually? Sometimes, argue? sometimes he does, yeah, sometimes yeah. he does. Sometimes yeah. he just, you know what, sometimes he puts a live up and then he just sits in the background and lets other people argue amongst themselves. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen lots of that. That's a that's a good one because you get lots of viewers on that. Yeah, it's drama sells, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <clears throat> Too many aqua reruns here? Aquariums. Aquarians? Okay. The ego thing oh. made me think of the character Sphinx from Mystery Men. Hmm. I'm a Pisces. Oh, I'm a Virgo. I'm a Virgo in Vedic and uh, Western, so either or. Oh, look, there I am. Or sidereal, I mean, or whatever. One month, one month ago, just because that video, <laughs> I'm on that one. <laughs> one month ago. Okay. Yeah, you can see me in the film. Oh, just because, again, one month ago, you can see me in the thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> it says the sad parasites. Yeah. I don't know. He might be editing it down then or whatever. I don't know. Why is he not? That's very strange. Latest videos. No. Yeah, I wanted to take a look at this. Where were we here? Knights Templar. Oh, I think I went over to that one as well when he was talking about the Knights Templar. Before we get too far into that, this one, no, not that one. This one was cool. I can see with this, uh, he's got this uh, discovery of the electron, spherical cloud of positive charge. Okay, he's got positives and negatives, and then he's got the electron in negative. That's pretty close. That's, you know, mm. that's. Um, Everything in the universe is positively charged on the outside and negatively charged inside. Uh, that's just the way it is. And uh, that's, that's, uh, this is looking like it kind of, it, it's kind of got that in there. It's got the positive and negative charges. Uh, they're all, I guess they're all on the outside in an orientation, like a, a thing like that. And you would see that, I think. So that's pretty cool. Mm. That's, uh, Let's see. Performed experiments with cathode ray tubes. Uh, discovery of electrons also meant atoms are no longer indivis indivisible. Uh, name electrons. They uh, proved to be identical to particles from photoelectric and radioactive materials. So, yeah. All made of the electron. They want to divide it up into two things. You could call it a muon and an electron. You know, you've got just the two particles, the positive and negative, whatever way you want to call them. Whatever you want to call them, you know. That's what we're saying, though. But look, it, look if you look at that, that's what we're saying, as in, like, there's a lot of space there as well. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Between them. Yeah, there is. <laughs> yeah. Nothing, yeah. nothing is true. What, what my, basically what I was saying was nothing is truly solid. Nothing is actually no, truly it, solid. It, and it's all made of energy and uh like these uh these photons they flip around they build up a, a charge in the front and the, the white glowy part gets bigger and bigger and then it flips to the back and the, yeah it's it's interesting what they do they're they're neat that's how they propagate through the universe constantly as they build up a charge and like charging up a, a battery or an engine or something James is drawing chat. Hello, James. Hi, James. How's it going? So that's a pretty decent looking uh, perspective on it. I have I can't listen to the video. I can't play videos at all for probably another two months. They keep copywriting me on everything. Mm -hmm. Everyone's getting and that. Then, and, and then then I go to other people's channels. They play anything, any damn thing they want. You know, <laughs> it drives me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, but I think it's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, if you can't dazzle them with brilliance, baffle them with bullshit. That's what the modern science world is, is trying to do, giving you all their quasi-materials and stuff. And you know, Sorry, 
Be right back. Yeah. <clears throat> Dend right on, off what? Dend right on off signature signal route. Yeah. Yeah, you got to watch out for those dendrites in batteries. It's a big problem. Uh, they short out after a while. <clears throat> I like being old. You can forget everything. <laughs> Everybody just says, "Oh well." <laughs> I'm not old enough for that yet. Sidereal, you're a Virgo, Vedic, I'm a Leo. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Virgo in both, which is kind of funny and cool. You know, at least I know I'm a Virgo. <laughs> I don't have to choose between them. <coughs> I don't have to choose between a Leo and a Virgo or anything. I don't know if I have Leo traits. I don't know. Probably. I guess we all have some traits of all the uh, signs. Hi, Steve Arnold. Good to see you. If we see you enough, we'll mod you guys up. Hopefully we see you guys again. I'm basically a Libra, although I'm not a big fan of horoscopes. Yeah, I don't really pay much attention to them either, uh, Astro Outlaw. I just, like, I know the traits of the Virgo, so I know the negative traits of the Virgo, so I try really hard to watch out for them. I, you know, like, one of my negative traits is to be nitpicky. <laughs> I can find something wrong with just about anything. Uh, I try to avoid that, you know. <laughs> Which one actually calculates the planets were at your birth? Well, they also do it a little bit differently. I don't know. I can't tell you, Loretta. You would have to talk to an astrologer. And uh, then if you find one astrologer from each of those practices, they will argue until the, your days are done. See, there we go. I think Vedic does, but, you know, you know, what about the Mayan? You know, we, we, we've got Western Vedic. What about the Mayan? I live in North America, so shouldn't I use the Mayan? Right? Who knows? <laughs> it's really, I, I view it as a good guide. I know that people can use it to uh, apparently predict out your life path and major events and things that are probably going to happen to you. And they seem to do, uh, if the if the astrologer's good enough, uh, they seem to be right. I don't know. <clears throat> so is, I don't know if that's predicting the, the future or creating it, you know. Could be a bit of both. If a Virgo has candy around and you eat one, they'll notice you up <laughs> exactly. Exactly. See, I try to keep chocolate in the house, but Mrs. Max loves chocolate so much that it does not stay in the house. So I do notice that. <clears throat> they said my birth number was good. I'm not good at math. Okay. <laughs> There's a Native American zodiac that says I'm a raven. Okay. Interesting. They say that's a trauma trait. What's a trauma trait? It's not right, do it again. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know which. Uh, I'm a civet cat or one of those, os an ocelot in uh, Maya. Let's see. Ocelots are cool looking. Show you, show you an ocelot. <laughs> well, yeah, we kind of, we. I don't know that we notice everything, but you know, 
pretty analytical. Try to be, they have an analytical mind. I also was into art, which was kind of odd for a, not really odd, I, I don't think, because art and math <clears throat> have a lot in common. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> so that's an ocelot. They're cool looking. It's a cool looking cat. Uh, my Gemini people, I just check and see which one they are that day. Uh, go with the flow. Mm. It's not just me feeling this. My little one's feeling this as well. She's been ill for the past couple of days as well. Oh. I haven't checked my meters recently over the past few days. I don't think there was any spikes in my area. I run a, a meter called the ElectroSmart meter. It's got a, it. There's always new sources being put on uh, the system, but it was. I used it during the uh, pandemic there to track when people got sick. So when people got sick about a day or two before that happened, there was usually a spike in energy because they were putting on new systems they were starting up new wireless systems so when they do that they get a spike in energy when they start up the system which is ironic because we've just had fiber optic installed in our neighborhood and 5g towers going up yeah. literally as this past couple of three weeks yeah you can read um arthur furstenberg's electric rainbow a history of human uh, human humans and, elect and electricity. It's, uh, it documents the introduction of technologies and the diseases that follow. Like my wife, she got uh, Hong Kong flu from uh, FM radio. So when they brought in FM radio here, a lot of people got Hong Kong flu. Desert. Yeah, bang on that. I'm the Pisces. I'm the most lovable person you'll ever meet in the world. But don't piss me off because you'll make a true enemy of me. <laughs> you give kissy, kissy, uh, fishy kisses, but you'll you'll slap the hell out of you with your tail, eh? <laughs> I just, you know what? No, I've I've reversed that now actually throughout life because I just thought that just it genuinely used to put me in that negative field as well when people used to do that to me. So what I do now is I. Cut, block, ignore, delete. I just cut them off. My wife literally had a conversation with my wife a couple of days ago about this. There's a guy yeah. I knew. I used to get smoke off him, but he started taking the mick out of me. He'd borrow money off me. And then, um, and then yeah, he, he messed me about, giving me my money back. You know what I mean? And then it was like false promises, false promises. I'll get you this, I'll get you that. And yeah. he did that. He did it to me twice. Now, instead of getting angry, Instead of, getting, instead of getting frustrated and all the rest of it, I've literally sent him a text message and I just said to him, just keep the money. It's taught me a valuable lesson. I don't want to talk to you ever again. Yep. That's exactly <laughs> what you do. Cut you out of my life now. Just don't bother anymore. And, I've done, you know, yeah. done the exact same thing as well, you know. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was over money, you know, over $100. And uh, yeah. I said, you know what, just keep it. Just, just keep, don't, yeah. don't, don't call me again. Bye. Just don't bother. Don't call yeah. me again. It's, you know what? It's, it's worth a hundred dollars to get rid of you. Exactly that. Hey, Turamir. Good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, totally understandable. <laughs> you know, and the same people will bend over backwards for for somebody else. You know, I it's do funny. so much. Honestly, I really do so much. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what you do. Uh, I try at least, but then you just got to be stoic about things like that as well. You've got to realize when that's where to... they come up with like the weird sayings in the Bible, like "sell all your shit and follow Christ." Right? Well, that just means you know whatever, whatever gets in the way of your enlightenment, of your growth, of your yeah. let you it know, go. spiritual development. Let it go. You know. Yeah. Let it go. I've done that. I've genuinely done that. Yeah. 
No, don't hold a grudge, right, beloved? That's good. I never hold grudges. I said this yesterday yeah. as well. Don't. I never hold a grudge either. Be thankful, uh, yeah, be thankful for everything. I just see them as le lessons in life. That's what as I see. As soon as I get even with the son of a bitch, I forget it. <laughs> WC Fields. <laughs> yeah, he was funny. <laughs> Felt like I was the only one in my town that wasn't afraid. Yeah. Yeah, it felt like that for me too. When the uh, pandemic hit, I had to wear, to get on the bus. I couldn't get on the bus without wearing a mask, right? So uh, I put all kinds of propaganda, negative propaganda about the uh, <laughs> pandemic on my mask and wore that on the bus, you know. I could tell you stories about I the used, I used yeah. it as a billboard. You know, if you're going to make me wear it, fine. Here. <laughs> I'll I tell you what I, I think of it. <laughs> I didn't buy into any of it either. I didn't buy into any of it. One yeah. of the little things was the, the, there was a couple of free shops, um, stores, let's call them, that uh, uh, builders merchants called B&Q that we have over here in England. Um, so, yeah, it's all, all building stuff and whatnot. And I remember one day I was going in there to get some to get some stuff like you know, a new tool or whatever. And there's a guy at the front door, <laughs> at the door of the entrance of the store. <laughs> and he's looked at me and he said, he said, mask. And that's all he said. And I just looked at him and I went, no mask. <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of looked at me and went, you, you need a mask when you walk, when you when you come into the store. And I looked at him and I went, where's, where's the actual law, legislation, whatever, like to say mm -hmm. that I have to. Like He went, well, there isn't any. And I said, well, I'm not wearing one then. And I literally just walked past him. <laughs> Yeah. The evils I used to get off people was phenomenal. <laughs> My wife used to tell me off for it as well. Yeah, I walking, I'll be on the train and all the rest of it. I'll be on FaceTime with her or whatever, and she'll be like, "You've not got a mask on," and I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> I don't need a mask on. I'm yeah. not ill. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sick. I'm not. I'm not a surgeon. I'm not doing performing surgery. Oh, That's so all those funny. masks were good for." So, they did they did a good turn on people though, I must admit. Yeah. That that programming that they did there, that mind control that they oh, did yeah. there, it, it worked on yeah, it, it was psychological, it, right? It, it's, yeah. That's all it was for. Yeah. It was the psychology of it, you know, the six feet yeah. part, the masking. Do you reckon it was a spin-off from the MK Ultra sort of like them sort of programs? Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, well, that, sure. That, that's something you in know. there as well when you think about it. The mind it's all, control. It's all kind of combined, really, you know. Yeah. It, they're mapping your brain. They're, you know, mm. they're looking for triggers all the time, oh. things they can use. And then they were watching everybody who in, interacted with social medias and all the rest of it as well. So they they would get yeah. a good a good um, perspective of who would follow, who wouldn't. Yeah, follow. yeah, yeah. You've got a digi twin, and they're tracking all that. All that, all that data goes along with your digi twin. Everything you search out yeah. on the web, everything you watch, all of that goes to your digi twin, and they. Uh, they know whether you're a, a freedom lover or, you know, whether you'll go along to get along or whatever. They know exactly. Yeah, they know that we're working on our spiritual development. They're well aware of that. They try to diminish that. Yeah, they do. We're probably great practice for them. Mm. <laughs> but yeah. they do know how to turn that off. That can be done easily with uh, pulsating magnetic fields. Uh, they, they've already, that's already been figured out at Laurentian University how to turn on and turn off the psychic abilities. So that's, uh, <laughs> but you know, we're a group, which makes it a, a different dynamic. <clears throat> so that's uh, probably something that they're having a much harder time to overcome is a group dynamic, as opposed to like an individual. I remember a lady in Ireland literally say, we're restricting freedoms for the... Yep, exactly. Yep. Yep, she hold did. On, that. Hold on, I saw that video. Yeah. <clears throat> no, we're already... See, the problem is, is we're already in the prison. We we actually were, at the moment, we have to break out of prison. It's already a prison that's set up around us, the wireless prison. And we let them put that up. They have legislation in Canada protecting it. I got some some wine, but it's for the stew. Yum. <clears throat> yeah, the group dynamic seems to have an effect on them there, Steve. It's, it's weird. It's uh, it's kind of like that amplifying effect they talked about. You know, where there's one, it, it's 
doubled, you know, triple, and then you get another, and it ends up being tenfold. We always seem to break through, and like when we're doing like our destinations and our images and all that, we always seem to break through and get get information. We get uh, quite a bit, and I, I do believe we're being suppressed because usually, about ten minutes before our destination, I'll feel a, a pressure in the room. Uh, he is popping. Yeah, it's like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I get that. I, I tell you what, I, I sense that with my, my tinnitus. My tinnitus kicks in real loud and yeah. it comes out of nowhere. It's literally, it goes from like a dull, because it's always there. Yeah. <clears throat> because it's always there, you, you learn to kind of tune out of it and not listen to it, ignore it per se. But sometimes when I feel that, that biometric pressure drop, we that, do. That, that, that pressure, yeah, honestly, my ears just literally just bursts. It goes, yeah. Mm -hmm. and I get that real strong, yeah, honestly. Yeah, for me, it, it weighs down on my shoulders. It feels like somebody's put 20 pounds on each shoulder. <laughs> and the air pressure just uh, kind of comes in at you. That's, uh, that's interesting. You feel it in, in your knees. <laughs> My, my constantly popping my knees mm. and my elbows. Well, you can hear it. Oh, yeah. Mm. When gambling and alcohol and wild women, the other, the other half I wasted. <laughs> <laughs> Good quote there, beloved. Yeah, we have a great alcohol. tribe going on here. I don't drink alcohol. No, I, I do occasionally. I, I didn't for, uh, what, 15 years or so. Hadn't had any. Uh, well, no, I haven't had to drink for about four years now. Four or five uh, years, probably. I don't really like drinking that much. Like, one drink's okay, but, you know. No. It, it, I don't even, uh, no, no. It's too much for me. Too much for me. Not, not really for me, so. <clears throat> Yeah, I like W.C. Fields, too. He was hilarious. All right. We'll see you later, Astro. I'm not sure what time are we at. We'll probably go for another half hour. I usually do a two-hour. Take it easy, Astro. Safe journey. Oh, where's that civet cat? Oh. Oh, I'm just and get my little project I'm working on. <laughs> yeah, so do you have yourself a ground, like more grounding devices? You said you were going to... Uh, yeah, I've been making I wanted, to, I wanted to talk to you about a couple of those things because you should be using a, a new battery instead of old batteries that are... Because I know they have voltage left in them. But what I found is once they get to their operating voltage, it seems to stop working. I charge them back up again. <clears throat> oh, okay, good. Yeah. I uh, tried, I tried rechargeables. I wasn't. I was kind of sketchy on that. I have a rechargeable nine volt, uh, but I was kind of sketchy on that. I don't know. I'd have to. I have to do some testing with that. All right, Steve. See you, Steve. It was nice meeting you. Hope we see you again. The room, Steve. The room. Take care. Oh, he couldn't make it earlier. That's all right, Elderberry. What is, we have a uh, outside, what? Is that turn there? We have an outside, we have a play outside where the terrorist Jesus got stewed. <laughs> the terrorist, nice. <laughs> See, it's arranged by the Christian Lutheran cult. <laughs> They're doing their, their effigy of a man on a stick. <laughs> Got rid of six dozen eggs quickly. <laughs> oh, don't do that. That's not me. <laughs> Throwing eggs at people. 
Just go smoke them out. <clears throat> That's bizarre. Yeah, I guess uh, Sunday is going to be their their day to. What is that? Oh, okay. So I'm still trying to figure out a way that I can make myself unusable as a antenna. I haven't figured that out. Hey, Queen Peachy, good to see you. You put down 12 eggs this morning? You drink them, Scotty? No peeps are coloring my eggs. <laughs> I love deviled eggs. Those are awesome. <clears throat> yeah, go color your eggs and hide them around your, your yard. You made deviled eggs today. Nice. Do you put paprika on top with a little bit of uh, parsley? I love that. Oof. I'm back. <sighs> made around 80 eggs yeah my mother-in-law she used to my uh she used to boil up like a ton of eggs and just nutmeg yeah that's good too <coughs> she had like eggs that were sitting around the house for like a week hard-boiled eggs i don't know that's kind of weird you just sit around for a long time. There's going to be an Easter event distraction. I don't know. There might be. We know that everything's pretty much put on, so it's all an act. You know, I don't, uh, I don't know if there's going to be anything happening. <laughs> we haven't looked into that. Could be. I don't know. I put Himalayan salt in green onion and green onions. Okay. Oh, was that the Lost Boys, Trey? <laughs> the hunt. No. Where are we? Oh. My sister's name is Star. She got the cool name. <laughs> well, Desert Rose. If you got Desert Rose, that's cool. But you didn't get that. That's your made-up name. <clears throat> There's a song called Desert Rose. <laughs> is there? Yeah. Is it a good song? It's all right, actually. I yeah. like it. Smoked paprika and bacon bits. I like that, Travis. Good to see you. Something that I have always in the cupboard. Ishtar, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ishtar oh, wow. and Anna. I called her an Anna, too. In earlier forms. I think Inanna was before Ishtar. <laughs> Good to see you too, Travis. Hey, Travis. How are you doing? You'll be here in spirit. Okay. I don't, I don't know what that is. My Cherokee night name is Rose Petal. Oh, okay. That's cool. I heard eggs. <laughs> Jal mm. Oh, jalapenos on top. I got the jalapeno. I got so many spices in my cupboard, it's unreal. And I'm not joking as well. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm just like, loads, loads and loads of spices. I've got, 
I got the seed. jumbo packs. I buy like uh, garlic in the uh, one gallon yes. container. You know. Um, <laughs> nice garlic. Cute. All season crushed chilies, piri piri, <laughs> Cajun style. <laughs> I love it. Oh, and then, and then on top of that, I also have my Indian spices as well. That I like. Yeah, I, I'd be, I'd have more Indian spices, but my wife doesn't like curry that much. It's yeah, very, it very disappointing. I, yeah. I thought of divorcing her, but uh, told, told me no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the cider vinegar and the black strap molasses and all that sort of stuff as well. Uh, yeah. Hi, Regine. Regine, yeah. hello. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I love my spices. I love all my spices. Yeah, I sneak, I sneak curry into all kinds of things on her, and she gives me that evil eye, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, nobody else in the house. No, you snuck curry into this. Yeah, nobody else in the house eats spicy stuff at all. I made my wife a masala the other day, literally, you know, last first yeah, yeah. day. Yeah. It was. It was. I liked it, and I, li I literally only put like a little pinch, just, just a little pinch, oh. <laughs> tiny, tiny pinch. Of, um, it wasn't spicy to me. Yeah. But she was eating it, going, "Oh, this is spicy," and I'm like, <laughs> "Really?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my wife had uh, two spices when I met her: salt and pepper. That was it. Yeah, yeah, that yeah that's it. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, curry's good. Curry's good for you too. All the peppers and all that. Yep. It's good for your pain receptors in your body. It's good for uh, inflammation. Curry's mm -hmm. a blend of like, uh, it's got a lot of different, it, there are different blends, but you've generally got turmeric, uh, cumin, uh, mm -hmm. uh, some uh, clove, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a few other things. Fennel's a good one. Yeah. Um, there was one mentioned earlier that was in curry. Can't remember now, uh, Mark. Not, uh, but uh, yeah, generally. Cardamom. <clears throat> cardamom. Um, black pepper. Garlic. What was that one? Somebody mentioned it earlier. They were putting it on eggs. It's one of the major ingredients in it. Um, mm. Mm. Yeah. Orange peel, that's pretty good to put in your uh, a kibbled bay leaf as well. Lemon <clears> peel, <throat> mm -hmm. basil. Well, I can't find it, but anyways, yeah, lots of different spices in there. It's good for you. Good spices, and it was uh, kind of used uh, paprika mustard, yeah. Uh, it was kind of used as an antibacterial because they, they, a lot of their meat was kind of bad, you know, kill off all the parasites and shit. Yeah. Oh yeah, I couldn't ringworm a fucking nothing, yeah. nothing like that can live in my system. I tell you. <laughs> not nothing like that can live in my system. I just kill it off. I do. I burn it yeah, out. <laughs> right. I do the garlic, the raw garlic every day. So that burn that you can feel that going through your through your we system. I like that, that feeling. <clears throat> Hi Dolly, good to see you. <laughs> but yeah, diet diet's a big thing as well. I do believe that that can change. Obviously, there's the vibrations of the 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 energies of the foods that you put into you. Obviously, yeah. Affect I always thank your food too. I always say thank you to my food. You know, do that uh, blessing on the food. Well, that that stems back to Reiki. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's very it's a very energetic thing. You can look at Doctor Emoto's water experiments. Exactly that where he freezes or, water. Or, or the rice back. the rice yeah. experiments, or you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Saying saying bad words or writing bad words on the yeah. content. Yeah, yeah, I've seen all them. Yeah. Smoking nutmeg. Never tried that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I used to do all that crap when I was a kid. As well. oh, yeah. <laughs> Getting the banana pills and scraping the insides out and drying them. <laughs> Under black light, it glows. Okay. I ate some really hot curry in a restaurant. 
that had monkeys on the roof. <laughs> oh, the, the hottest curry really? I had in a takeaway was a, a lamb pal, and I literally sat there. I ate it all as well. Yeah. But the Indian, guy, the Indian guys in there serving me were like, hey, "We don't even eat that." <laughs> <laughs> and I was there sweating. sweating and I was and like, <laughs> I'm gonna finish it. Damn yeah, it! Yeah, yeah, that was on. I'll, I'll pay good money for this. I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> lose five pounds in sweat. And <laughs> yeah, that was good though. I enjoyed it. And then they were like, you know what I mean? They were coming to me after I was at the end of the meal and they were saying, do you, do you want some cream? Do you want, do you want a glass of milk? Or... <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm okay, thank you. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to have a 10 p.m. show this weekend, uh, Regine. Usually I'm at 11. Um, I try not to interrupt other people's streams, but I, I really don't like doing it so late. But uh, your subscription was turned off, yeah? You got to make a, make a comment on a video, Dolly. That helps as well. So everybody here that wants to stay sub, leave a comment on a video, and that'll that'll help apparently. But we're highly suppressed here, so I'm surprised we're getting some new people in. That's amazing. Don't usually see many new people. I mix my ri mix rice with brown. Okay. Hmm. A rice eater. Yeah, you mix the right. Yeah, I, I like I like those uh, specialty races like black rice. That was fun. They're awful chewy, but they're good. Got a good taste to them. Black rice, red rice. <clears throat> it's not just brown and white. So there's a whole bunch of different colors. There's wild rices in can that grow in Canada. Uh, and the, all the uh, marshes and that. That's pretty cool. I've never collected any, but that'd be fun. <clears throat> oh. Yeah, they're going to cut off all the, uh, they're trying to cut off the rice now. And uh, over two-thirds of the planet lives on rice, pretty much. So that's not going to work out well. Oh, you see what the Chinese have been doing as well with the fake rice, plastic rice. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah? No, serious. When you get time, when you get chance, mm -hmm. go and have a look at fake foods from China. And I mean, they've been doing it for ooh, umpteen years as well. A lot of years they've been doing it. Wow. Like the plastic lettuces. You get fake lettuce, plastic wow. lettuce. Yeah. Plastic plastic rice, plastic loads of plastic foods. Like cheese. Look at the you know the cheese that you get, burger cheese that you get in the in the uh microwave meal. So uh -huh. you know, that, that's that thin strip of plastic I call it plastic cheese. But there they are. A lot of that has um oh, yeah. <laughs> chemicals and whatnot in it. Yeah. Yeah, they're doing that to a lot of stuff. Mm. They're trying to make that fake meat. Uh, fake meat, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so there's, there's the... that fake meat. So they, they're getting some marbling in there. That's just horrible. Oh, there you go. Can you tell the difference? Mm. Fake fish as well. Yeah. There's a lot of fake fish. Yeah. That really does, uh, once you cut it up, that does look like a piece of meat, eh? Yeah. Oh, this is where they're injecting it with the water. You're getting so much better at it, you know? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. They've been doing it for 10, nearly 20 years they've been doing uh, this. And then they'll, they'll package most of it up and send it elsewhere in the world as well. So they're, yeah. not, even, they're not consuming it themselves. That's gross. Yeah. Well, we, like we send, okay, we send our chickens to China to be processed. How much of that coming back is plastic? Right, injected, oh, that. injected with, yeah. What do they got? Like uh, ribs, we can yeah. make fake ribs. Cool, <clears throat> look at them pulling it out of the mold. There you go, you make your fake ribs. Unbelievable, awesome. isn't it? That's awesome. Oh, there's your fake rice, yeah, your rice pellets. Yep, 
made from plastic. You contrast the rice. In hey, the you see, you see that green thing that, that, that you see that green like mat that he's using there underneath. I've got one of them in my workshop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly the same. <laughs> <Just pretend laughs> fabric on, eh? Measuring mats, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's how they get the rice the right size, eh? Hmm. That's disgusting. Here's your fake noodles. What we got here? Oh, something green and fake. What's our green fake thing here? Oh, that's disgusting. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> oh, fake noodles. Mm. That'd be it. That's a that's a no brainer, right? Just fake noodles. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Easily done that. Yeah. Yeah. When you, when you think as well, plastic, a lot of plastics, when you put them in hot water, they kind of melt. You know what I mean? Yeah. They kind of pop like that consistency. Some dumplings. Well. There's them all puffed up. There we go. <laughs> Fake buns. Oh, showing us culture. I guess they culture it. So they grow some bacteria or something and kill it off and then feed the desiccated body to you after they let it ferment for a few years or something fake eggs there you go yum <laughs> oh my god ridiculous isn't it honestly they've really gone all out with it yeah oh fake vegetables hey that looks good green tea so a bit of tea oh, yeah, yeah green tea leaves you know the green tea leaves yeah yeah oh yeah like, yeah <clears throat> it's, it's totally indis indistinguishable as well you can't tell the yeah. difference they're putting them side by side. You can't tell. Fake honey. Fake honey. Yeah, that's yeah. A, yeah, of course. That happens here a lot. Fake stuff. Nice. Yeah. So they've got a lot of a lot of fake food. Mm. Uh, they probably now that it seems like they can pretty much counterfeit anything. Someone's yeah. actually stupid enough to explore. Why well, yeah. Why? Why plastic? Because there would be cheaper sources of uh, things. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why it's plastic. I'll you tell know. you exactly why. Uh, I'll well, we know why. I think well. we all know why. But yeah. Well, it, it's ahead. not so much. It's not so much the use of plastic as in like because of the toxicity, whatever else as well. It's not just that. But go and have a look at the research on this as well. Like, my wife. My wife will testify to this as well. Like, yeah, we have. Two different bins here in England <gasps> that we put normal rubbish that goes off to the landfill and we do recycling. So like oh, we have yeah. the same size bins, right? Mm -hmm. Now China, we that our government have been selling all of our recycling to China. Just sending it, shipping it off to China, and they're getting it pennies. Literally, mm -hmm. like you know what I mean, cents per tonnage or whatever. Like the so work it's like a double edged sword. They're mm -hmm. charging us to wash our recycling and then put it in the bin, charging us to collect it, and then mm -hmm. charging us to export it. Yeah, so that and then yep. they get money from China for China buying it from them. So they're getting it double. Well, money. that's because you're doing it eco-friendly. You know, that's the yeah, eco -friendly. and it's all under the guise of being <clears throat> eco-friendly. You know, yeah, right? yeah. We yeah. we send our computers off to uh, India, where they uh, melt them down in open air pits of acid. Mm -hmm. that, uh, leach into the environment, you know. So yeah. it's, it's because they're taking the in micro, all the, the plastic. The, from the plastics Western are region. awesome mm -hmm. because you can use microplastics as sensors. They also make a great sensor inside the human body. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's crazy. Honest to God, honestly, so it's it's a multi-purpose thing. It'll help make you sick too. So there's that. You know, uh, the estrogen mimickers in plastics. Uh, those are good for you as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they, there's a lot of benefits to eating plastic for them, you know. For them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and when, when you think about that as well, now, now put that little nugget into the into the mix here as well. Mm. Look at the way the world's got, the, especially mostly the Western world. Now, estrogen levels have gone up by something like 40, nearly 50% mm -hmm. in general population, yep. which is creating more... LGBTQ plus society, let's call it, yeah, yep. or the the femininity of yeah, of, you know, men have less testosterone now. Exactly, than they did yeah. So obviously, more, more, which reduces a population. That reduces a population. 
10 years ago, there was something like 4% were, yeah. and, and don't get me wrong, when I say any of this as well, I have nothing against anybody being gay or anything, whatever, like yeah, any of the other, I don't hold any. It's any just problem. what's happening, that's all. I'm it just is, pointing out some facts what's happening. within our society, yeah. So yeah. it was 10 years ago, it was 4% of the population in England were of that of that group of people. Now it's up to something like 20 some percent, like, yeah. Now, in yeah. 10 years, that's a dramatic push on, on that some agenda. Of that, some of that's chemical, but some of it's programming. A lot of it's programming, too. Like places yeah. like California, where almost 25% of young women under 18 identify as something other than female or have some other trait that they identify as. So that, mm. that's programming and possibly the estrogen. Yeah, yeah, look at the universities and all the rest of it out in America and the indoctrination that they're pushing on that agenda. Like, what, yeah. what is a woman? So, you know, that you, you, must, you must have heard of all of that going on as well. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's an agenda they're pushing, obviously. Like, of course it is. Hmm. I'm a real man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gotta, oh, wow, fucking at me. Got to take your, <laughs> gotta take your uh, testosterone there. Yeah, they, they, they can use a lot of things for sensors, Scotty. They can use plastics. They can use nanotubules. They can use carbon. Uh, all Carbon's a big one, things. yeah. All kinds of things, yeah. Yeah, they, if, if they can get a response out of it, they can use it as a, a sensor. And as a sensor, they can link it up, becoming a node, because then they can uh, flash um, code, right? Because if you can turn it on or off, if you have an on-off position, you've got code. So they start using it that way. <laughs> so anything that they can get a signal back off of is what they'll use. And they, you know, they're working now on being able to like what they're talking about is in the document I was showing earlier was how to use this as like a generator. Um, now you can, now I don't know how about uh, about storage of energy, but they're going to use that to uh, power um, the nano the, the nano particles, give them power, and uh, allow them to link up and other things that will give them extra properties that they didn't have before. <laughs> to link up in chains and uh, be used as greater sensors, right? More directed. Yeah, the more sensors and nodes you can put in a spot, uh, in an array, the the more focused you can get it. So, hi right, Tim, nice to see you. Hey Tim, yeah, Dolly, there's a room. Being, if I'm getting used to generate, yeah, that's my point, uh, Loretta. I, I think there should be a lawsuit for this because we've been paying for the wireless network, right? But what they didn't tell us is since 1995, we've been part of it. So you're using me as the network and not paying me? I'm pissed. I want... <laughs> On the contrary, they, 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 want, they want you to fucking pay for it. Yeah, <laughs> they made me pay, right? So, you know, I, Max has got to get paid, bitch. I, I want my money. Yeah, <laughs> I'm on my reparations. Of being yeah, <laughs> exactly. You know, they didn't consult me. They didn't ask me. Nobody, nobody put up a a, a questionnaire. You know, do you want to be part of the network? You know, hey, right? do you know what they do though? They'll say, yeah, hey, it's in the small print. Didn't you read the small print? Yeah, uh, yeah, I did. You know, when you were born, we all your, degree, you know, right? when you were born, and your parents signed that piece of paper. Right? Right? Yeah, Small on that. <laughs> it put you in the that, sea, right? Didn't it? It wasn't. Put it you, wasn't even the piece of paper that you got to keep yourself as your. Made you a part of the, the holy sea or out. something, didn't it? <laughs> I'm not up on that. Uh, I, I was looking into that for a little while. The uh, maritime law and the uh, yeah, I know a lot, about, yeah, yeah. I know a lot about all of that. To be fair, <laughs> I know no, a little. I know a little, little, little bit about it. Your social security number is basically yeah. just it's um and if you look on the back of your birth certificate, etc., your documents mm -hmm. that were provided to you, you have a code on there as well, and they can use that code to trade your your details and you as mm -hmm. a person as on the stock market. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, oh. that's an, an interesting point about it. Yeah, <laughs> it's all linked to your Digi Twin, your digital avatar, so they can send all of your parameters. <clears throat> you know, send your your habits and your shopping and all that with it, and sell that information. <laughs> oh, I'm really hungry. Yeah, me too. It's almost five o'clock. I've got to. I'm going to cut it off in about five minutes. Oh. Mm. You're in the States and you concur? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the States is being hammered heavily. And they've set up their 5G uh, prison system. Not completely, it seems, but uh, I haven't checked all the carriers. But, uh, yeah, they're, they're hemming us in pretty good. So we gotta we got to make a prison break. And the only way to make the prison break is make people aware that they're even in a prison because they don't know it. So yeah. um, what people might not know as well is that um, the fiber op I got I got into this recently because obviously we've had fiber optic installed in our neighborhood. So, yeah. nice. um, and as, as it goes, the dial up, the thought telephone dial up connection that we was on previous to that with the router. Yeah. Was um, it was as soon as they put in the fiber, that was it. I was started messing about, kept turning off and what. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Oh yeah. Was, so, that's obviously, so that's obviously a, a push for people to change over to the to the fiber optic and oh, we've got a better system, etc. So we did. Yeah. Right? Now, looking into this, when I got the router box, it's in. Hang on, it's in my it's in my daughter's room. So bear with me a sec. Hang on. Hang on. So it's a bit of a mess in here, as teenagers are. <laughs> but Part of our, it. our new Wi-Fi box that goes onto the fiber optic network that we're on, mm. and that, what, I've, what I've done is as well, I've put it right at the back of the house here as well. Like, yeah. So yeah. yeah. So this has five G built into it. This takes that fiber optic, that connection from the fiber, yeah. and actually this now produces a 5G network from this box, which is yeah. inside the home. So it's not just on these towers outside and no. all the rest of the people are going on about. This yeah. installing it inside your homes. And if you know anything about the 5G network, what you'll know is that they can use it as a receptor, as a scanning device, so they know where every object is in your house. Oh yeah, uh, they can use your body to do that too. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. So they know they know where your cooker is. They know where your sofa is. They know where your TV is on the wall. They know where your refrigerator. They know where everything is located in your house. They, they do, that do that with this. This is beam steering antenna for 5G mobile phones they're putting out. Hello, uh, FKT. How are you doing? Good evening. So yeah, uh, and they're they're making it steerable so they can direct it uh, to where they want. It's it's ridiculous. This is uh, one of the antennas here that they're going to put into the phones. Apparently, yeah, they've they put it everywhere. Um, <clears throat> it's ridiculous. I have my uh, computer hardwired to my router, and it's in a box, a metal box. Can't do that in my house because the kids are all on bloody Wi-Fi and stuff like that with the phones and tabs and all the rest of it. So yeah. What I was saying to you before, I know, I know for a fact that I am being bombarded in my house with signals and. Absolutely, yeah. <sighs> uh, yeah, I keep my phone on airplane mode most of the time too, Dolly. I check it a couple of times a day, and that's about it. I really don't leave my phone on at all. Uh, I prefer sleeping on the floor, Scotty. I genuinely, I'd, honestly, I feel much better if I've slept on the floor. <clears throat> I can't sleep in like I can't sleep on my kids' bed. Honestly, it's too soft. I sink into it and I can't sleep in it. There's literally, I wake up with a bad back. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Oh, so I went on a little bit of an urbex mission the other day because there's an old, <laughs> there's an old farm that's been there. The, the guy passed away over there and they're trying to buy the land so they can build housings. Of and course. Whatnot. Like, yeah, obviously. But I went and took my five year old with me and we went on a little urbex through the, the two houses, the two farm houses, and the big garage that he had there. <laughs> nice. Honestly, the, the guy was a clockmaker, mm -hmm. but there was 
the kids have obviously smashed up loads of the stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Mm. But the, the garage hadn't been touched. They hadn't been able to get in there. Oh, and yeah. I, I cleverly undid the, the lock that was on there, so to speak, and I went to, and I had a little look around. Oh, man, I found loads of stuff. Oh, nice. There was a bag, and I'm not joking, I've got the bag up in the workshop. This is just one of them, like, yeah. There was a bag full of ivory stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah. This is like a letter opener. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, cool. Isn't that good? That's Isn't made that of good? ivory, eh? Beautiful. Yeah, it's original oh, ivory beautiful. as well. Like, yeah, back from the 80s. <laughs> Holy. Yeah, there's loads. Of, there was loads of it in there as well. So, and it's not plastic. I know it's not plastic, right? Because you get the you get the fake cellulose plastic that you can get as well. That does not melt. It just burns. See it? Yeah, it don't burns. don't melt. burn it. Don't burn no, no, it. No, no, no. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Yeah, there was loads of ivory bits in there. There was some uh, mother of pearl, loads of mother of pearl in there as well. So it's basically what he was using as the inlays for the, you know, on the wooden, on the outside, the, the clock faces and all the rest of it. Like, yeah. Let me show you yeah. something, F Kitty. Got loads of brass stuff as well. Oh, Box stuff, like steampunky sort of, like, you know, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it was pretty <laughs> cool. Travis, beloved abstract. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, if you can, you can detect tons of stuff. Oh no, God, got to turn my phone on. Okay, so what's going on right now? Let's go live. Yeah, here's all the sources of Wi Fi around me at the moment, so you can. Get this app, and it'll tell you when new sources are detected. It'll tell you what they are, uh, how powerful they are. Two point four, oh, two point four. Oh. There's there's a five G, couple of five Gs there. Oh. Hidden SSD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That list just goes on. There's Bluetooth devices, all kinds of things that you can. <laughs> I've I've named my I've named my wireless sharing hotspot on my phone. I've named it. Government, oh yeah, government data collection port. Nobody nobody goes onto it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> That's nobody awful. uses it. I've even tested it on the train as well. I left my Wi-Fi open, no password, <laughs> so anybody could, and nobody connected to it over a two-hour journey. <laughs> oh, <that's> hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Government data collection port. <laughs> <laughs> Bang! Nobody's using your Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, this one here is an interesting one. I haven't identified who this is. It's Global Wireless. They're a major source of uh, a lot of the signals that are around here. I think that might even. I think that's the satellite system. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's an app, Dolly. It's called the. I'll get. I'll pull it up for you. I try to get people to get this on their phone, so that they can track what's going on around. This is what I track the pan pandemic with too. Oh, I'm on Play Store already. For Android. <clears throat> Oh, here we go. There's a link for it. Yeah, it measures every all the antennas around you. <clears throat> Everything. <laughs> I may not tell you, you know, global wireless. I don't know what that is, so it, it doesn't really tell me where it's coming from or anything, but it's everywhere, at least in my area. I'm like that desert. I'm exactly like that. I am. Um, I make <clears> good with all my neighbors around me. I'm, I'm pretty. It's kind of like I did it on purpose because I make a lot of noise and I've got my workshop in my garden. So my work's at home. And I know that some most people, they go off to work and they come home and they just want to relax when they come home from work. So and if I'm obviously on the angle grinder and all the rest of it until five, six, <laughs> I've got to make them sweet, haven't I? <laughs> 
That's true, F Kitty. Yep. Any device around you, they'll use it too. They'll use it as security because uh, they can use you as a security network. Putting the data through you gives them a level of security. And the more people they can put the same data through um, on the output end, uh, they can be more assured that it's the correct data. <laughs> All I know is I play certain frequencies. Yeah, yeah, there's lots of good frequencies to play. There's also, uh, I just was going to download from my computer. Um, I have a three channel um, tone generator that I use on my phone. It's really good. Uh, Oh, most, the most, you go into the Play Store, and most of them bloody EMF detectors are, are all about ghost hunting and stuff. Yeah, they perform the same function. This one's really cool. Got three channels you can play different frequencies on. 528 and 432 are really good. Um, I sleep to that. I, I go to sleep with those on because they're healing to DNA and RNA. <clears throat> and then there's 7.83 hertz. That's Earth Schumann resonance. That's a good one to play. Please tell us about how you feel about waves. To automatically configure your exposure alerts, you can still change it later. I'm just curious. <laughs> say that again? Is, is that what... it, it came up with an option to see how to optimize the app for me, and it said, um, "Are you uh, are you electrosensitive? Are you not oh, electrosensitive, yeah. or are you just curious?" Oh, wow. <laughs> so, Interesting. I don't, I don't remember if they did that when I signed up. I've had it for five six years so i don't remember if it's if it asked me that i'm not sure Ooh, my wi-fi box is in the orange band it's going at 60 out of 100. yeah that's that's yeah. uh that's up there that's not too high usually yeah. people get agitated at around 68 um and then at 72 they start getting sick <clears throat> yep there you go eh that's my that's my Wi-Fi network at the yeah. top. Yeah, sixty is not too bad of a rating. That's moderate. It's it's on the high end, but devices. Still... How many other devices? Nine other sources around me on devices. Yeah, they're all in the orange band as well. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, the green band doesn't uh, doesn't come up too often. The green band, <laughs> like for an overall, if you go to. Uh, like your overall, you, you'll have a record in there, and it'll keep an overall record of the day. Uh, what's it called? At the bottom of the uh, screen you were on there. That's not bad. That's what's around me on the 4G. Yeah. That's not too bad. Up to 22. 18 to 22 on them. Uh, let's have a look at my device. Oh, my gosh. Now, See, because move, I've got, because you, I've got 5G switched off pretty much on because none of us use the 5G. Yeah. The 5G is actually lower than the 4G, so that's telling me that the five the 4G is actually being used a lot more than the 5G. The 5G is 60, and the 4G is for 66. Yeah, mm -hmm. 4G is broadcast. 5G is directional. Uh, so there's a big difference between the two. Or they're supposed to be, anyways. Advice 60 is this exposure is reasonable and suits most people. Hmm. I want to reduce my exposure. Now you can look in solutions too at the bottom of the uh, app there. Yeah, it says there that. It's got, uh, you can find things that can help. Um, Switching off this source will reduce your exposure by 65%, but it'll also increase my um, my being whinged at by my kids by 100%. <laughs> so what you can do is go into settings, and I set it to unlimited um, storage, and you can set the threshold like where you want your threshold to be, where it put, sends out an alarm. I put mine at 68, so it, it sends out an alarm 
Yeah. To me, when it goes above 68. Get notification telling you, yeah. You can also, um, where is it? <clears throat> Advanced mode. Um, <laughs> I love every bit of you being four foot 11 inches. <laughs> now, there is a, there's a storage setting in here because it keeps a record um, of every 24 hour period in the overall exposure. You won't have that yet. It updates at midnight. Um, but so tomorrow, tomorrow you'll have a record on the first screen. There's the, at the bottom, there's live statistics and solutions. Uh, the live is what you're watching right now. The solutions or sorry, the statistics is a record of what, uh, each day was like in an overall, uh, and with a graph showing you the different hours of the day and how much exposure. But if you take that around your house, you'll find that different areas have different readings. So you can find a low spot, uh, one a place in your house that it doesn't have as much uh, energy being beamed into it. <clears throat> oh, I can't stand it anymore. I'm hungry. I'm going to cook some food. <laughs> yep, it's 5.11. All right, guys, that's uh, all we've got for today. Much love to you all. Keep your third eye open. We'll see you in class tonight. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Thank you. Good night. Thanks for coming up, Sab. No problem. Thank you for having me.